Africa. The, the motherland. motherland. The place where my ancestors originated and the birthplace of my bloodline. The continent where wild animals run and the landscape is vast. The journey takes me back to exploring the culture, people, sights, sounds, and ambiance. A mystery. A mystery. A mystery of the unknown, the always wondering what it would have been like to know the culture in and out. The overwhelming feelings and emotions of walking through the towns and visiting with the people will never be forgotten. Today we visit the city sites and sounds of South Africa. Join me as I explore this amazing place for the very first time. I think it's safe to assume that many of you all are like me. When you pick these amazing destinations out, the first thing you do is you go to the travel sites and you try to find the most amazing excursions that you can add to your trip to make it just a little bit better. But then when you come back from your trip and you start to come across people and tell them about your story, they say, hey, I've been there as well. And they're mentioning all these things that you wish that you had done. And I used to do that, but I've recently changed how I do things. I try to see the place through the eyes of the people who live there. I try to see it the way they want me to see it, as opposed to trying to force it into what I want it to be. So that's what I did on this trip. I thought back to those times where a similar incidents happened. For example, I can remember many years ago, my wife and I went out to an amazing tropical paradise. And we booked a, what we thought would be a great excursion. But when we got there, we realized probably wasn't the best excursion to pick. You see, when we went to the website, we saw a submarine ride. And immediately I thought back to National Geographic and the Discovery Channels. I thought of beautiful coral reefs and amazingly colored fish. Now, when we arrived to the island and we got to the rendezvous point, we started to realize this may be a tourist trap. They started to shuffle us onto a boat and counting every head to make sure they squeezed every dollar out of this trip. We took about a 30 minute boat ride and finally arrived to the submarine and they started to shove us on this submarine. Now, I don't know what you all think when you think of submarines, but it was like metal and low roofs and it was definitely not a place for a tall person. But immediately I thought to myself, you know, I'm not going to judge this excursion based on what I thought it was going to be. I'm going to judge it on what it actually is. You know, it's a rare occasion where you get to go on a submarine ride. So I lean back and enjoy the ride. And after I left that, me and my wife, we started to walk around the island, just looking at the different attractions that the tours, I mean, that the locals had to offer. And we ran across a vendor and he's like, if you like the items that I have for sale here, you would love the items I have back in my shop. It's only a short walk away. And as we began to follow this, this, this merchant to his shop, he began to point out the different sights and sounds of the island, giving us the history of the statue and the people. And we were realizing that we paid a lot of money for that excursion to go on a submarine ride. But the best part of this trip was this free walk through the island with this local. We got back to the shop and he showed us all his merchandise and it was amazing. He even stained a piece of wood that he had carved right there, right there in front of us. And it really made the trip special. So that's what I want you all to do with this video. I want you to sit back, enjoy the sights, the sounds of Africa through my eyes. So I'm going to let you all enjoy that. Thanks for watching.
will then see the half tunnel on your left hand side folks that will be on your right there we see the half tunnel that is caved in a uh, cave coved into the mountain range all the way up all this has been reconstructed and also reinforced simply with steel inside the mountains and we'll see that protruding out of the walls This is known as our biggest beach on the coastline. So where you see the water laying on the beach, that is all rainwater that has fallen for the last couple of days. And out there folks, way out there in the distance, you see a black spot laying on the beach. That is simply part of a shipwreck known as the Coco Powell. So remnants or the skeleton of the shipwreck has submerged with the greater part of the landscape that is out there in the distance. There was a film company come in here. He's from Europe. Thank you, thank you. He's from Europe. Now that film company give each house, he give a 5,000 rent. Okay. <laughs> that, that was only a few houses in 1930. Only dead houses. I got the pictures here, I got to show you. It was white. So that film company come in and they give each house a 5,000 rent. I asked them, can I use your house for a film? Everyone agree, right? And they give you, a, they give you each house, they give you a, a different color paint.
mountain ranges that you were seeing, they are forming part of the greater segment, and the greater segment forms the part of the Drakensberg Mountain. Drakensberg Mountain is the biggest and loneliest mountain in South Africa, stretching from the northernmost province of South Africa, Limpopo, on the eastern side, town called Salem, all the way down to the southern Cape in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. It was named after the dragon that you found in this area billions and billions of years ago, the dragon's death mountain. Okay, this necklace is made in Durban by the Zulu ladies. They are a group of people who recruit children or the ladies who don't work, they put them together and then start making the beads. Necklaces, they make bracelets, they make earrings. That's what they make to survive.